Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mark Gerard. I am with Wildlife Act, and I'm presenting to you on the barriers to entry or scale up in the conservation business sector, specifically looking at micro businesses um, and entrepreneurs living adjacent to protected areas, living adjacent to parks. This was work that I carried out um, as part of my MBA program at the African Leadership University School of Business. Just to provide some context, um, the study was carried out in KwaZulu-Natal, primarily in the northern parts of the province. Um, South Africa as a whole has an extremely high Gini coefficient of 0.63, which is one of the highest globally. And this indicates the significant difference and inequality gap um, between the wealthy and the poor areas uh, and, and rich and poor individuals. KZN is no exception to this. We have an extremely high poverty headcount of 60.7. Um, and in the context of the, the protected areas and the wildlife rich areas, um, this is exacerbated with very much rural areas, um, high levels of unemployment, and um, yet highly rich biodiversity areas. We have a thriving wildlife economy in the country. Um, KZN, again, no exception. Very high, um, as, I, as I mentioned, high biodiversity, the center of the Maputo Land, Pondo Land, Albany hotspot, um, one of the global uh, biodiversity hotspots. And the wildlife economy is, is something that is part of government's development plans. Um, we have the national tourism and wildlife sector worth around 30 billion, and billion, rand, billion dollars annually. And this is an opportunity to continue to grow in this space and to continue to uh, tap into the natural capital that exists in this province and in the country. So just in terms of the wildlife economy, um, just highlighting the government's development plan. So this is the, one of the biodiversity economy nodes. This exists in KZN, um, and this is a number of... Um, this is one of a number of biodiversity economy nodes that have been established by government to drive the wildlife economy because of our rich biodiversity. And <clears throat> so this is a photograph which many of us are familiar with. We have a high human population on the right, high density. Uh, we then have a fence dividing that population from the protected area on the left. And so you can see the immense pressure that starts to build <coughs> excuse me, on that, on that um, protected area. Um, we have high human density. We have an increasing focus and demand for natural resources. And we have very limited inclusion of those local individuals, local uh, communities into the wildlife economy. And how, do we, how do we change that? So many rural communities still very much remain passive stakeholders rather than active shareholders in the conservation, conservation economy. And we need to change that. If we're going to be incentivizing people to, to want um, and be obtaining the benefits from conservation, from um, a sustainable use of natural resources, they need to be part of that solution. And so we need to be creating more inclusivity in that space. So the study was really a, an assessment of the situation, carried out interviews with a number of groups, um, the first being the entrepreneurs, and this included private guides, <coughs> those living in those communities that were taking tours, so in the tourism sector. Um, other entrepreneurs that existed were addressing other needs in the conservation sector um, and the tourism, the tourism sector. Commercial business owners and managers, so um, those more established more commercial operations that would be seen as a demand side for for small businesses entering and working in their the supply chain um, and then local economic development specialists were interviewed to understand um, some of the history some of the uh, lessons learned and thoughts in that space so the barriers to entry that were identified um, i've categorized them there into into five groups the first two were was really around understanding the sector. Um, you can't sort of address problems if you don't understand the sector fully. And this is, was quite clearly picked up, a lack of understanding of value chain opportunities, 
um, the knowledge and quality of the product and service being sold was not fully understood. Um, so that, that exact need of those commercial businesses was not, not necessarily being addressed. Um, point number three, business skills and administration. A lack of maintaining uh, tracks, uh, track record of, of finances, expenditure, and just general administration, invoicing, etc. Um, and that often leads to and affects those points number seven and eight, specifically access to finance, um, getting access to finance without being able to show a, a strong track record, at least show the history of your business is extremely difficult. Um, so, so it makes it really difficult for, for businesses to grow and scale. Points numbers four, five, and six, um, business responsibility, entrepreneurial and problem-solving mindset, and integration into the formal business structure. So this hinged very much around the what it means to be in a business relationship. So specifically, if you are if you're contracted or if you're providing a good or service to a business, what does it mean to be part of that? If you if you don't deliver, understand the impact of that of that poor delivery or that lack of delivery on the bigger value chain and, and therefore the business. And how does that affect um, the long term trust, the long term commitment of those of those bigger businesses to engage in this? more informal sector and the importance of moving from an informal space into the formal space. Points number seven and eight very much much covered and this really reduces the, the ability to grow, the ability to scale. Um, points numbers nine and ten, mentorship and a network for doing business. This is really again allowing the, the platform for growth and the need for mentorship, the need for guidance, um, this typically happens in, in any business sector is the need for, for mentorship. And much of, the, much of the business activity that takes place um, in the region, in, in the country, takes place from a network. And there's a really a need to, to try and strengthen those networks um, and, and, and allow opportunities to be identified amongst the network and support from that network. So just looking at potential solutions um, to address some of these, these barriers, how to bring them down. Um, the first two is really a knowledge building exercise. Um, how, do we, how do we address that lack of understanding of exactly what, it, what, what, is, what is the product, um, what is the sector addressing? And so there's an opportunity and a potential gap there to partner with those commercial businesses, um, almost an internship type of role. But really working alongside them so that there's a there's there's a building of understanding of of the sector um, and if you are an entrepreneur if you're a micro business in that space um, you're knowing which which problems to address point number three business skills and administration I think that's much more of a basic skills development and training need um, just really record keeping um, keeping tabs on your finances is a strong need in that space and then the rest are really around business support and guidance, um, building that ability to and, and that understanding um, of what it means to be in a business relationship. What are you addressing? What is that problem you're addressing as, a, as an entrepreneur? Um, through that and through the record keeping, um, improved access to finance, improved access to the market. And, and then points number nine and ten again, um, that long term engagement is crucial with business support and a potential incubator program to address that. So in terms of what is next, um, for us it's about looking at a potential support through an incubator program to, to many of these entrepreneurs. And with the COVID um, pandemic that has come and had a significant impact on the conservation sector, the tourism sector, it's, it's made us realize that there's been a heavy reliance on tourism. So there's a, there's a need to try and adjust that. There's also been, it's, it's made it clear that in the tourism sector that does exist, um, it's not a, not a fully inclusive economy. And so there's, a, there's an opportunity here to build back better with the recovery. So in terms of the incubator, it's really trying to create alignment. It's, it's to make sure that the views of both sides of the value chain are aligned and, and, and meet. Um, so that, that micro-entrepreneur really what, what they are producing 
by really understanding what the, the commercial side, the commercial conservation businesses is um, offering and producing, how do we make sure that that, um, that, that touch point is, is exactly correct? Um, so, it's, so it's really, in, in one sense, it's a de demand-driven incubation um, focused on sourcing the right entrepreneur. So working with strong entrepreneurs that have, have the vision, have the passion, have the inspiration, um, and they're just needing a bit of um, fine-tuning to, to address the, the problem statement of the, of the business that they are, they are working in. Um, and, and so the focus is really around in-demand products and services to allow um, sort of quick pickup uh, and also to achieve growth and, and scale in the future. Um, this photograph below shows one of the carvers who have been producing just carving uh, wildlife to sell as curios to, to tourists um, with the global, with the pandemic and the, the reduction and restrictions on travel they no longer have a market to sell to. And so here exists this guy, his ability to change and start producing these little figures on the right, which is, um, which is supplying to a, to a local toy company. So um, again, using that network um, to try and address the problem and, and, and being able to swing quickly. In terms of modeling, um, so the incubator model really has four stages to it. Um, the first is very much around sourcing, um, recruiting the entrepreneurs, uh, making sure that the right ones are coming into the system. The second phase is then working with stakeholders to understand that market demand. So what are the commercial uh, businesses looking at or if they're not um, right in that space elsewhere, what, are the, what, are the, what, what elements of the market exist and, and have, have gaps that need to be addressed. Um, the incubation piece is really the skills development um, and the training and then the monitoring and ongoing mentoring as well that needs to take place. And the maintenance is that long-term sustainability for those entrepreneurs and a big part of it is the network development and, and mentorship um, management. And so what does success look like? It's, it's, for us, it's really around an incentivized group of entrepreneurs that are living in those communities adjacent to parks that are able to, to, to connect and create livelihoods and generate livelihoods from conservation and be part of, the, be part of its, its success. So thank you very much, and I look forward to any questions afterwards.